Oh, hey, everybody. It's 3 p.m., maybe even a minute after, and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. Hope you guys are having a great Friday, leaning into a fabulous Memorial Weekend. I'm Nanny Bubby, and we started making, hey, Sue Rainish, we started making an eggplant salad yesterday. We started first with the condiments that are going to go on top of the eggplant salad. Hey, Teresa, good to see you. Happy you're here. I love seeing all of my gatherers come, and I look forward to this every day. I really sincerely mean that, gals and guys. Frank is always here, um, and uh, I look forward to always seeing you and chatting through, uh, asking you questions you asking me questions and it's great and even teresa is suddenly traveling from reno to st petersburg florida so hopefully teresa you're having a wonderful time on vacation um, i'm trying to get my hair from sticking out there i can see it in the camera because i'm just that vain i don't want hair sticking out uh, so teresa tell us what you're doing in st petersburg I wonder if it's really hot yet or if it's still tolerable. So yesterday, you can answer that in just a second. Yesterday, we made this amazing lemon paste. And this is from a, a quick preserved lemon process. But instead of maybe waiting three to four days for the preserved lemons to sort of melt out and become translucent and flavorful, this was a really quick take on how to make a preserved taste. Hey, mom, how are you? Good to have you here. And these are the pickled chilies that we made yesterday. A little trick to this is that I brought these out of the refrigerator and let them come to room temperature because I think they're better at room temperature. And certainly the paste will be not quite as thick because it is at room temperature. So uh, that's the long and short of it. These recipes are Yotam Odalongi's recipes for an eggplant salad and the lemon paste condiment and the pickled chilies condiment that I learned while taking his master class. I have been obsessed with him and all of his recipes. I found the cookbooks a little challenging because I wasn't used to things like um, some of the Middle Eastern spices that he used. And so I really need his visual lesson to help explain this to me and um, get me enthused and involved. And so I am wanting to pass that on to all of you because I found him so incredibly um, uh, it, in, inspiring. Hey, Kathy Berkey, how are you? So good to have you here. So let's start now that we've made the pickled chilies and they sat in the refrigerator overnight, about 24 hours, and the lemon paste. We're going to start with the eggplant. The Europeans call these aubergines, very hot and humid in Florida. Yes, that's why we love the desert. But are you on vacation or business? That is the question. And how lucky that we're all starting to travel. So exciting. All right, so we're gonna take our aubergines as the Europeans call them and as the Americans call them, eggplant. And we're gonna just slice off the ends, just a little slice and get the, the rough part out of the way. And then we're just going to slice these very thickly because as they roast, they shrivel up. So that's about it. Just a really rough, thick cut, as you can see. And onto a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Drawing a knife around there. Now, Yotan Olangi says that we should put these all in a bowl, toss them with salt and pepper, pour on about six tablespoons of olive oil. And I don't disagree with him. Everybody has their own technique. But for me, what I have learned is that the eggplant absorbs in an amazing capacity the olive oil. Eggplant is very, very porous. And by the time you're done tossing it, there's just not enough to go around. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? So I have always preferred spraying them with olive oil because that way you're getting an even olive oil cover to them. So as you can see, I'm just doing a light coat of this olive oil. I'll turn them over and do the same side. Uh, the opposite side, same thing on the, the other side, just a light coat. There we go, as you can see. And then we're going to grab some salt. 
Did I already say hi to Lindsay? I think I did. Hi, Lindsay. So good to have you here. So a little bit of salt. And, and I only salt and pepper them on one side. I don't find it necessary to do both sides. So here we go. Just a little again with pepper. I always raise my hand as high as I can because it gives you more control in the sprinkling. That way you don't get just like a big glob. All right. And that's it. And now we're going to take these and we're going to stick them in the oven at 425 degrees and let them roast. And generally they come out very golden and reddish golden. Um, they almost take on the color of the outer aubergine mixed with the brown and it makes it very a rose golden color. And I'll show you just what I mean because in the interest of time for all of you, hey Frank, good to have you here. I was wondering when you were gonna show up, our only man that shows up every day. We used to have another one, but he's visiting Lake Havasu, so he hasn't been here lately, but hopefully he'll be back soon. So I'll show you what I mean. I made a big batch of these prior to getting here just so that you could see the process and so we could finish the salad. So I'm gonna turn my back on all of you for just a moment and grab these eggplant right here. So here's the eggplant, and you can see the golden roasted color of all of these. Isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous. So what we're going to do to start out is we're going to take these, and they've had a chance to shrivel. The thing about this is that you really don't want them to be looking all so perfect. You just don't. So what we're going to do is put them in a big bowl and we're going to toss them with the dressing. So I, I did not grab that big bowl. Let me do that. Cannot find the big bowl. We're going to have to do it another way because I remembered I sent my big bowl home with my um, friend on Tuesday night where she had a big bowl of the gnocchi. And I said, here, just take this and bring it back to me over the weekend. So I don't have my big, great bowl, but we'll still be able to do that right here on this platter. I think we'll just be fine. So. <laughs> I just remembered I gave that bowl away for the weekend. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the dressing. And the dress dressing is going to consist of the lemon paste, olive oil, and herbs. So let's first take these herbs, and I'll tell you what I've got. I've got the dill was not quite ready in Nanny Bubby's garden, so I did buy dill from the grocery store. So we're just going to give this a nice rough chop. I love this recipe, guys. I'm so crazy about it, almost as much as the Mahamra. And that's it, just a rough chop. There we go, about two tablespoons or a little more of the dill. Loving that, and that goes right into this bowl. Get this right here into the bowl. Let me put this bowl here so that you can all see it. Then the next thing we're gonna do is these did come out of Nanny Bubby's garden, and we have basil or as Yotam Odolonghi says, basil, um, which I always find amazing. And here is the parsley. So we're just gonna do a very rough chop on these. Let me set the bowl just down here a little bit. And into the bowl, there we go. Just roughly chopping them, because this is all just going to be a beautiful dressing. Now the thing about this eggplant salad is if you're having a brunch, the eggplant salad is a perfect side to go with eggs, to go with, with anything. If you're doing meat, it is absolutely delicious because eggplant in itself is very meaty and yet light at the same time. So it goes great with lamb, of course. Lamb is a very big um, Middle Eastern um, uh, meal um, and the eggplant goes really great with that. I already mentioned eggs. It goes great if you're just doing mezza spread. So hummus and my favorite and very beautiful Mahamara. You've heard me keep talking about the Mahamara. I think I love it because it's hot pink, which comes from my mother. My mother decorated an all pink house. And so we all lived in pink and hot pink and light pink and baby pink all of our lives, so my sister and I love pink. Um, all shades of pink. If you notice, every day I'm in pink of some kind. Usually Nanny Bubby is in pink. So when I found a dish like Mahamra that actually was pink, 
I was out of my mind with absolute sheer joy. Now this basil came out of my um, garden just yesterday. And sadly, I, I washed it yesterday and it is just not as green as when I first picked it. Um, and sometimes, and I don't know what it is, maybe one of you know the answer to this, but sometimes basil can get washed and sit in the refrigerator for just a little bit. Um, because, uh, and it looks fine. Uh, and then sometimes like this right now, it turned just a little brown, but because it's going to be mixed in a salad dressing, I'm not too, um, worried about it. And it's going to go in with all of these beautiful greens in this bowl. Gosh, again, basil, <laughs> my fresh basil out of my garden smells like pot did in the sixties. Um, which I'm convinced that kids in the 60s were actually smoking basil instead of pot compared to what it smells like today. But <laughs> anyway, hey, Heather Larico, so nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Lindsay said, you want an all pink house. I know, it's so fun to think about. So here we go. In this, we have all these beautiful, beautiful herbs. We've got the, the basil or basil that did have a little bit of dark green to it instead of the bright green, but mixed into all these other bright greens. I don't think you need to worry too much about it. Beautiful parsley right out of Nanny Bubby's garden as well. And now we're gonna take about two tablespoons of this beautiful lemon paste that I finished with olive oil yesterday. Whoop, there we go. You can see just we sealed it. Let me just tilt you down. We sealed this with a little bit of olive oil right on the top to keep, you know, what air might get in there um, from actually getting in and ruining it. And we're going to take about, now this is really, really thick, which is great. So again, I brought this to room temperature. There we go. Just about two tablespoons. There we go. I brought this to room temperature uh, about an hour before you came to see it get made finally. We're going to take a little bit of maple syrup because what we want to do is we want to just get a little bit of that bitter pith from the rind of the lemon from having that bitter taste and just a teaspoon and a half of the maple syrup will get it out. So here we go. Right over the top. There we go. Okay, that looks beautiful. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a dressing by adding what's left of this olive oil, which I'm afraid is just not that much. It's not even gonna get out. Let's see if I can get this out. There we go, whatever's left in this bottle. Let's get it out. Apparently nothing is left in this bottle. So, okay, it looked like there was something left in this bottle. Let's get the tin foil that dropped in out of there. And let's get the, the full bottle. And let's put in about, oh, I don't know, about eight tablespoons of olive oil. Just And what we wanna do is we wanna loosen up the lemon paste. So we go, can you see this? I don't think you can. There we go. So you can see that the lemon paste is literally getting all over the herbs. But what we want to do is we really, oh, you can smell it too. You can smell the lemon. It just looks absolutely so flavorful and gorgeous. And as you can see, the darker basil is not showing up at all. So sometimes when that happens, I think if you're just using the basil itself as a condiment uh, to drop on top, you really just need to wash it and use it the minute you um take it out of the garden or buy it at the grocery store. But in this case, since it was being combined, I think that I got very lucky. So let's add just a little bit more olive oil. There we go. And that is about the right consistency. There we go. Okay. And so now what we are going to do, whoop, splashing all over the place. Make sure all that lemon plate paste is loosened up. I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil because I really wanna be able to toss the eggplant in this. There we go. Okay. So let me see what I can pull out. 
If you'll just give me one second and let me just grab a bowl to show you this technique because your eggplant having been roasted is going to break apart a little bit. And the great thing about this dish, says Yotam Odolonghi, is that it is anything but perfect. It is one of those things that you just want the colors to speak. The colors say, I am flavorful, eat me. And I'm not perfect and I'm not meant to be perfect. I'm just here for your liking. And so I want to show you the technique that he used. So if you'll give me one minute, let me grab a better bowl here. One of the, the other bowls that I have. And let me show you exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to take all of these eggplants, which have cooled now, and we will put them into this bowl right here. And you know, if you are having a Memorial Day barbecue, if you are um, having friends over for brunch, I mean, you, we all do so many different things on a holiday weekend. Why? Because we can, because we have the time to do that. And we're all so exhausted, we don't know how to get back into regular life, right? But it's always worth it. So we're gonna, here's these eggplants in the bowl. And then we're just gonna take this dressing and we're going to toss it, get a better grip, right onto here, like this. And then with our hands, which are our chef's best tools, we're just going to toss this all around. Make sure that they all get covered. Some of them are going to tear. And as Yotam says, that's perfectly fine. Let them tear. This dish is not meant to be perfect. It's meant to just say, eat me and be very flavorful. There we go. So all of this I think is covered. I'm just not sure if you can see all that. Let me back you up a little bit then I think you'll be able to see. And let me just grab, oh, this is just amazing. I have fallen so deeply and passionately in love with these recipes that I dream about them at night. I dream about making them. I dream about cooking next to Yotam Odolonghi. I, I am so enthused by the flavors of the cumin and the coriander seed and the different things that I have never had any experience. Am I back? Okay, sorry about that. Um, so right in the middle of a heartfelt speech, my alarm goes off. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, so I'm gonna take this plate. Kind of stole my moment, didn't it? Okay. All righty, so let's plate this. Let me move this in a place that you can see it. Of course, my hands are dirty, but I, I'm going to keep them. Um, FYI, male versus female eggplant. Male has fewer seeds and can tell by the bottom end. Male is round, female is more like, and I, I don't want to touch that part of the phone, Brenda, um, because I... Uh, my hands are so dirty here, but I, th I think female probably is more pointy, which it seems counterintuitive, like it would be the opposite, but we shall see. So can you see how these are going onto the plank? Give me a thumbs up here. There we go. Now, these are three eggplants, about uh, two pounds altogether. There we go. There we go. This one just did not get enough. Let's get that tossed just a little bit better. And we'll put that right like that. Look at that. Look at how beautiful, especially on the white plate, right? So good. Let me just mop up just a little bit of this. Now also there's a little bit of drizzle. It's left in the bowl that I was tossing. My hands are so slippery right now. Let's see if I can get, whoop. Let me see if I can get this out. Just a little bit of drizzle here. There we go. Okay. Let me set this aside. I do have to give my hands a little bit of a wash, so give me a moment. Get off all that olive oil. And we are now gonna grab our um, pickled chilies. Hey, Heather, how are you? Female dash, uh, more like, let's see. Let's see, now I can touch and see. Uh, more like a dash, 
uh, male is round and female is more like a dash. I can't interpret that, Brenda. I'm not sure what you mean. Like it's like this, kind of squished and flat, like a dash in a name. I think that's what you mean. Let's see. Okay, here are these beautiful chilies. We're going to pull them out. Oh my gosh, this is looking so beautiful. Okay, look at this. These chilies, even the seeds, you know, the seeds. Look at the color on this. Um, you know, if you're looking for, I love during the holidays, during the Christmas holidays, that if you're entertaining and it, listen, if you're doing for Hanukkah, like I do, I always try to do everything in white and blue, but foods are not blue. Foods can be white. Um, donuts can be white and blue. But if you're doing something for Christmas, this is so beautiful because I love to do red and green, um, foods that are red and green for Christmas. And look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, can I get an applause on that? Or really, can the eggplant get an applause? It deserves the applause, not me, or Yota Motolangi for having taught it. And we have one, hey, Sue Mendorf, um, so glad to have you here. So last touch on this beautiful dish, and please let me, why do I get so excited? I hope you do too. Um, oh, I should take a beautiful picture of this, right? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? But we're not quite done yet because the last step is to take about a third or a quarter of a cup of pistachios. And this looks like it's going to be more than enough. So let me just chop these up. There we go. These are roasted pistachios. These are the regular pistachios. You know that this brand, I think they're called Wonderful. They actually have chili roasted pistachios, so they have them in all kinds of different uh, flavors. And so that might have been fun to put on this as well. So let me back you up so you can see the dish. Look at that. Is that gorgeous? And now we're going to take these pistachios and just sprinkle them right on here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Well, and there you have it. Look at that. I am so proud of this dish. I'm so excited. And I will tell you just some of, some of the tips that I learned. When cooking something that takes a lot of condiments, which most of Yotamotolonghi's dishes do, that you need to make the condiments ahead. And that way, like this lemon paste, like the chilies that we did yesterday, making them 24 hours advance is such an advantage because as you can see, this was very easy to make, but not if I had waited and done the condiments all on the same day. It would have been a lot of work that would have had you on your feet. And I'm very conscious of that because my kitchen has tile in it rather than wood and my back and my legs can really really do me in um what if i'm not careful the the other thing is is that it's it's a complete make ahead dish so this can be served at room temperature you can cover it and put it in the refrigerator but then you want to take it out about an hour before your guests arrive or an hour before you're going to eat it because room temperature it's just absolutely amazing just fantastic. So that's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So I just want to remind you of some really important things. We are going to be giving away next Friday. We're going to be giving away a big cheese pack basket from the Wisconsin Cheese Association. And this is how you can win it. Um, you can go into Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group and post a picture of a food with cheese in it, like a cheeseburger, um, a recipe, your favorite cheese recipe, your favorite food with cheese in it, like a lasagna or an eggplant parmesan, or a asparagus cheese tart, something of that nature. Just anything that has cheese in it, post any picture, um, post a recipe, uh, post, uh, 
I guess a picture and a recipe is about the long and short of it all. And when you do that, you will be entering to win this cheese basket. And so I'll be keeping track of who's posting Gather with Danny Bubby. And then I will pull your names out of a hat on Friday. So how this is going to work is that the Wisconsin Cheese Association is sponsoring um, Cheese Month. And Cheese Month starts June 1st through June 30th. And believe it or not, Friday, June 4th is National Cheese Day. Who knew, right? Who knew? And so we're going to be doing, in honor of National Cheese Day, I'm going to be doing two cheese dishes on Channel 8 that day. So I'm going to tune all of you in to watch. And then as soon as I get off the air on Channel 8, I'm going to turn back to all of you and we will pick someone's name out of the hat who is going to win the big cheese basket. It's going to be sent to you directly from Wisconsin, from the Cheese Association, um, and it's going to be beautiful. And you'll be able to eat that cheese all through the month of June. And if you can't, cheese freezes beautifully, so you can then cheese it and have some wonderful things. So I do hope you'll tune in. Most importantly, start now. Take a picture. Start tonight. Post a recipe, post a picture. If you're out tonight eating something with cheese in it, snap a picture, tell us what it is, and post it up and gather with Danny Bubby. Is that a deal? Give me a thumbs up if it's a deal. And I look forward to pulling your name out of the hat and see if you're winning the big cheese basket. That's it. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful uh, Memorial three-day holiday weekend. I will be here on Monday starting off Cheese Week. And uh, uh, every recipe I'm going to be making next week is going to be a cheese recipe starting a day early, though, because uh, the first is not until Tuesday, I think. So that's it, everybody. Love you to death. Thank you for joining me. Y you make my heart sing. And if you show up, I show up. So thank you so much. On the count of three, one, two, three, go out and, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, spread love like butter. Thank you, everybody.